Hi guys, in today's bootcamp slash tutorial of Warno, I want to talk about how to set up a good defense. Now, in this game it is really difficult to come up with a good tutorial because it's such a complex game and there's so many things that you have to take into consideration when doing anything in this game. Um, then it's really difficult to, you know, have like a golden rule of defending, a golden rule of attacking. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of examples here in a couple of games that I've been part of and um, tell you guys what uh, what to look for or what to kind of, you know, take notes of. So I do hope that this is going to help out some of you because a lot of people are panicking when they're defending, when the enemy's attacking, or they are panicking and making some, you know, miscalculations when attacking. So I will also be covering the attacking aspect of this game, but we're going to keep them nice and simple and only focus on defending um, in this video. So I do hope that uh, you're going to pick something up and improve your gameplay. Okay, so here's one example of a well-executed defense. So I am playing as the third armored. Our opponent is the 79th armored. So we got NATO versus Soviet armored. And as you can see, we're doing a big tank push out in the open. <clears throat> we're basically moving towards these tanks here. And what my opponent has done really well is place 80 gems on flanks to ensure that you get side shots on tanks. So that is one way you can utilize an otherwise cheap unit, you know, worth 60 points, in a way that it can block a force that nears a thousand points. So you want overarching lines of fire with units. So this M1A1 with one shot got dropped down to two HP. Another ATGM on the right side, um, well, it does hit this M1A1. But right now these tanks are basically caught out in the open. And then what Mo does is move his tanks in a slightly better position to be able to give fire support and fire on these tanks when they're out in the open. So we pop out of the smoke to engage these guys once more. We do engage the tanks, but once again, we get a beautiful kind of crossfire happening from Mo. But the most important thing is he doesn't do anything drastically. He doesn't simply just, you know, move all of his units forward and do a big risky counterattack. Another good way to have a good defensive line is by having a good secondary defensive line. This TADBV and TADU and this TADBV and BRM recon were all way back here. Now his frontline tanks were up here, but then he had a secondary line of units back here to react as soon as I make a move. And that is exactly what he's doing. So he's moving up his TADBV to start engaging some of my units while my two M1A1s are basically inoperable. They're trying to fix up. They're really in a bad spot. The moment they move up again, they're going to get shot at from three different directions. So I am doing a little bit of a rushed attack in this case, because I usually don't really play against opponents that have a good defensive strategy. Mostly these defensive lines crumble really, really quickly the moment you attack it aggressively. But that is not the case here. This opponent is well calculated and just taking it nice and slow. So once again, we pop up with our M1A1s. The Conquerors immediately start firing. We once again get side shots and this guy drops down to 2 HP. And then the tanks that are at three different positions immediately destroy the M1A1. This ATGM, because it's on a flank, does not care about the smoke that you drop on the front of the tank. And now all of my tanks are either destroyed or so badly damaged that my entire push is wasted. And I don't think our opponent actually lost anything major, like maybe an infantry there, but that is about it. And look at this defensive line. So he's got regular infantry up on the front, together with recon. He has 80 gems on the flanks. This one got destroyed. But then he has tanks on three positions to ensure side shots, because that is really how you win against heavy armor is by getting some good side shots. But this is only one example of a well-executed defensive line. And the most important thing is, is to have multiple lines. So his initial line is right here with a couple of Modestreliki. Then he had two tanks over here. And then he had a couple more tanks way in the back. And that is a perfect example of how to set up a good defensive line. Now, one scenario isn't really going to cut it because there's different maps, there's different types of battle groups. So I'm going to go through a couple scenarios and hopefully they'll give you an idea of how to best use your units to the fullest when setting up a defensive line. 
Now here is another example of a kind of a desperate looking situation. So we have Holly on the left side in a 3v3 that we did, and we have Skiffic attacking this position very aggressively. So as you can see, there's military police, lots of recon units, um, all the way to AA and supplies, two heavy tanks. It's just kind of a difficult situation, you might think, uh, when you, the only thing you have is a Sapri squad and one tank. But when you're up against someone that has overwhelming firepower, the best thing to do is to revert back to ambush strategies. So that's exactly what we are trying to do here. So I have a TADU here. Basically, I'm moving it into an ambush position here to try to get any unit that tries to, you know, go out in the open here. We have one tank in the south that is going to engage. And at this point, it once again comes down to pinter moves. So this TADU immediately hits the M1A1 and smokes. And over here, we have a TADU engaging this M1A1. And when that is fallen back, we move up another TADU to give it a side shot. And just like that, we've neutralized the main bulk of his forces. These two tanks are basically both gone. This guy's on one HP. The other tank got destroyed in like three seconds. And now we immediately equalize the playing field. So now we can bring in some more infantry and try to hold this push off. But the main thing here is to not rush it. Just keep your tank nice and safe until reinforcements arrive. At this point, as you can see, the one good unit that we do have is moving into an ambush position. We're not moving it out completely. We're gonna wait for the enemy to come towards us so that we maximize our firepower. And also we give more time for other units to arrive. So falling back occasionally is not bad. Forget about the conquest point. Just forget about the zone. You don't need to keep that command in there 24 seven. So what are we doing here? Two heavy tanks moving up. We fall back with one of our tanks until we equalize the playing field here. So now we have two tanks as well. We pop out with one of them, get a beautiful side shot on one of those M1A1s. The other one pops out, deals a really deadly blow on it, and then the first one takes it out. Just like that, we've neutralized two tanks again. And while that has been going on, our reinforcements have arrived. And now these guys can take the battle in the forest. We once again fall back with our tanks. Just regroup, recuperate, repair, rearm, all of that, and then we move on and react to the next kind of push. So this is a good example of how to respond to overwhelming firepower, and it is simply by delaying strategies, ambush strategies, and basically making the enemy move towards you so that you can pick where you want to fight, not the other way. All right, here is a skirmish mission. It doesn't really matter what, you know, what we're playing up against, but I'm going to teach you guys how to start with a defense. How to start with a good defense that you can then build on and then from there build for a push. So build for an offense. But, you know, at the basis of everything during every match is a good defense. So I have talked about this before, but the first thing I do when I play on a new map is decide where the middle of the map is by literally just turning the map sideways putting one spawn on one side and the other spawn on the other side. And that way we can easily tell that this is pretty much the middle. So that is usually where you will find the enemy. So the line of contact will probably be over here. If you want to play defensive, I recommend going a little bit, you know, more towards your side, especially to areas where there's buildings, because building give your units cover, especially your infantry. And also it is important to have, you know, uh, forested areas for more stealth and more cover for your armored units. But let's say I were to go fully defensive. I would look, initially, I kind of li like to look for buildings that are that have a good line of sight on everything. So if you, for example, look at this guy, it has a decent line of sight on you know both of those areas. This one is better, but it is pretty much in the middle of the map, so it's quite risky. So I wouldn't really put anything there just yet if I'm deciding to play very defensive. Now, the first thing I would do is get recon, because a game without recon really is already lost. You will not see anything. But also the recon, you don't want to just sacrifice these units. So we're going to put one of them over here. Let's say the other one we can be a little bit more aggressive with. So we'll move them to that house. And then this guy will try to move up. Um, we'll try to like uh, move them up here. And then we can walk them up to where we want. 
Now the second thing I like to do is usually go for AT gems. And AT gems are really good at denying the enemy territory. They're just good at scaring them off. So when we look at this open field here, there's a couple of buildings that have a nice line of sight across that field. So we can put an AT gem there and that should be able to cover that entire area. Now there's another open field over here. If we put an AT gem here, that should be able to cover that. And then we have a third one that we want to place in a strategic position as well. And this looks like a good one right there. So we'll have this guy go there. So that is our recon sorted. That is our AT gem sorted. If you're, you know, definitely new to the game, I recommend getting AA. And when you do get AA, I recommend getting supply trucks. So we're going to get two of those. And then these guys, we're going to move not that close to the front line. You don't want to just sacrifice these guys. So our units are going there. So I'm going to put one of these guys in a tree or in a tree line back here and also give him a supply truck. That way you don't really need to, you know, be afraid that they're going to run out of supplies. And then another one we'll put right there, which is a really nice spot. Make sure they're on a the road that leads to that area or that make sure that they're there as fast as possible. And we'll get the supply truck there as well. So that takes care of our recon, of our AT gems, of our AA. So what else? We need some basic infantry. So we'll go for BMP2s. So we're going to get three of those. I usually get units in groups of two, sometimes three, uh, just to make sure I have enough of them. So we'll have one guy go there. One of these BMPs go here to cover the conquerors. You don't want to keep the conquerors alone. And then we'll have one guy to protect the forest on the right side and basically just hold in that area. Okay. Now there's a couple different types of zones on this map. Here it's kind of open. Here it's really open. Over here it is a forest fight. So this also comes down to knowing which units to use where. For example, we have these Saperis with RPO launchers, which are amazing against infantry. So we're going to have one guy go here and unload right here. And if you're wondering which buttons I click on my keyboard, um, I do recommend checking out my hotkeys tutorial. So we'll have one of those go there. And on the left side, you know what? I might want another squad of Monostreliki to cover here in the forest. All right, that leaves us with 335 points. Let's see what else we can get. Probably could get a tank, just at least one tank to hold that open field. So we're going to get a TADUD, super heavy unit. Um, but usually I also want to have a supply truck with these guys so I can keep filling up the smoke dispenser. So we're going to go for a cheaper guy, in this case a TADU, so that we can get a supply truck. We're going to select them both and put them in a nice, like, conservative position. And then we're going to launch the game. And I'm just going to speed it up and kind of show you guys how this is going to perform without me even touching the mouse and keyboard. We're just going to observe and see what happens. And can I just show you how effective these kind of smart, you know, positioning of your units can be. So right now we're getting engaged by Bradley, so obviously you would fall back and get into a slightly better position, but then the Conquerors takes care of that. Over here, we have the Conquerors destroy the truck, our T-80 is going to destroy the tow, all of our recon is spotting pretty much everything you can think of, and is doing an awesome job. When you do see AT gems, I recommend just smoking off your units. And this is really all really important in general, but especially so if you're playing defensive. And we're just gonna let the enemy attack us, and that is definitely the best way to win these kind of engagements. Conquerors destroying a Bradley. Look at that, we've already destroyed lots of high tier units. And we're not even attacking. We are just defending and building up points to build for an attack. But the most important thing about this game, about how to get better, is first how to know how to defend. Because if you're good at defending, attacking is going to be a piece of cake. Because you will you lose less units, thus you will have more points to spend on forces you want to attack with. With this general setup, we have a really good overall setup of units. And uh, yeah, it, it performs really well, as you can see. Even though it is AI, the unit positioning doesn't change, the line of sight of these will still remain vital. Now the best way to learn the game is by playing it, but I do hope that these couple of scenarios and examples gave you an idea of what to look for when setting up defenses or when to set up kind of a, a, a flexible front line. 
Especially the first scenario that I showed was a really good example of how to set up a good flexible front line that hopes that you push in so that you can get good side shots and overarching uh, lines of fire. And uh, the second and third were just a good example of what to do when the enemy is overwhelmingly attacking you, which in that case you just slowly retreat, build up a new line and then do a counter attack. Uh, speaking of attack, that's going to be the new tutorial or the next tutorial. So I'm going to be talking about offensive moves and how to set up for an attack. And uh, there's a good couple of scenarios I can talk uh, to you about. So I do hope that you're going to stick around for that as well. And uh, hope you learned something because that is really the purpose of these videos. Take care.